Okay, so no um, kind of camping bushcraft wilderness trip would be complete without um, a bit of an intro to fire. Uh, you'll all get the chance to have a go tomorrow at, um, at making one. So tomorrow afternoon is going to be kind of a, I'm going to show you a few different things and you're going to have a go at a few different bushcraft skills. Uh, it's Billy, just right. Yeah. Hello Billy. Hey. Um, I found Australia You found Australia Irishman, excellent. We love those. You know where the bar is. So. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to show you is one way of making fire. There's lots of different ways. Um, <clears throat> takes a bit of, well, they all take a bit of practice, um, unless you've got a huge amount of paraffin and a match. Um, and even then, you've got to be careful. So what I'm going to show you is a way that you can get a fire going, even if it's wet. So as you know, kind of all of these logs are wet. There's a good drenching downpour last night. Um, I haven't brought anything in, apart from some birch bark. So when you make a fire, there's a couple of things you need. You need some kindling, which is just matchstick thick sticks. And the best place to get them is still attached to the tree. Okay, so this is the stuff that you can just walk along and snap it off. And that's the driest wood in a forest. Even a kind of a dead branch attached to a tree is probably still gonna be quite dry inside. <coughs> so this is kind of your best stuff. So you got your kindling, then you want um, some kind of finger thickness sticks. So, you know, a good bunch of these. Just kind of finger thickness. So matchstick, finger, and then, you know, you gradually sort of build it up to where they start to become kind of your burners, which are kind of forearm thickness sticks. For, for us, with a camp of about 40 and a big fire pit, we might well get some bigger logs burning because they're going to burn through the night, be ready for the morning. But if there's just you or one or two of you, you don't need to go any bigger than kind of this really. Just have loads of these. And then you, your fire's never gonna get out of hand, never gonna be a danger to you or the forest or anyone else. So this is kind of plenty good enough. Okay, so we've got a fire pit, which is a very safe way to make a fire. Um, if, there, if I wasn't sort of, if I hadn't dug down, dug a pit, and it was just me and my own camping, all I'd do is Wherever I'm going to have the fire, clear a space back to bare earth, a nice big area. <coughs> kind of about that size. Um, and then I've got a, you know, a bare area where I've kind of moved a lot of the dry stuff that can flames can jump and catch fire. Um, and I've got a safe working space to build my fire. That's already done in the fire pit. So we'll go straight to that stage. What I want first is um, just a little platform that I'm gonna put the fire on. So I'll get some of the kind of burner sticks and I'll just make, let's get where you can see, just a little platform. And what this does is it gives me a tidy base to work on, but it, insulates the fire from the cold of the ground. So the ground's cold, damp, and it's, it's hard enough getting a fire going anyway, especially if the weather is wet, windy, inclement. So I don't want anything that's gonna suck the heat quickly out of the fire. So I'll make this kind of platform. It insulates the fire from the coldness of the ground. It allows the air to get up underneath. You know, as you know, the fire triangle. So we need oxygen air underneath. It also forms the heart of the fire, the base of the fire, and it'll, that'll kind of help it to burn as it goes through. So the next thing I get is my kind of, and you want kind of a two hands circular grip full of these. Don't scrimp on these, okay? Because if you don't have enough of these, you are not gonna get your fire going. It's gonna burn out too quick. So get a good two hands grip of those. Gonna split it. And I'm gonna make like a TPV like that like an upside down V. And if you were this side, you can see I've got a nice hole under there where I'm gonna be able to put my flame when I get it. Okay, so then what I need next is my tinder. And what I've got here is um, some, anyone know what this is? Birch bark. Silver, silver birch bark. The silver birch is the one of your best friends in the forest. Um, especially when it comes to getting fires going. Because this stuff, even when it's wet, 
has got the resin in it that will allow a spark to catch on it. Okay, but even though it's you know flammable and good, you still want to give yourself the best shot. So if you can see, it kind of comes in really thin layers like an onion. And you want to peel it to the finest layers that you can. So did you find that yourself somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I, I bought this in. I've got a kind of a bag of it. Yeah. 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 eBay, yeah. eBay. <laughs> so you want to strip it down really fine. All right. Yeah, it just kind of peels off the trees real easy. Often it kind of falls off the trees. You know, there's other things you can use. Dry grass will work. Certainly. Yeah, certain mosses well, are good. Um, yeah, cotton buds off the, the grasses. Uh, if you're really stuck, the you know just cut a little slit in your sleeping bag, and the, the down, pull some of the down out of it. Yeah. What about so there's, you know, there's there's loads of you know every country every culture has got different ways of, of getting this stuff. So you want a, a good kind of handful of it. Fungus as well. Yeah, like certain funguses. And, uh, Don't any Because yeah. mm. you know, of course, um, matches and a lighter are fine. Probably matches and a lighter, same as the other stuff. Gets That's wet. the only way you can get a fire mm. going, mm. and wet. your kit inevitably gets wet. You're in a bit of trouble. So the other stuff you can, you know, if you're going on a, a trip or an expedition, you can take um, cotton wool balls, dip them in some, vas you know, rub them in some Vaseline. And again, even if it gets wet, that will still catch fire. Okay, so kind of about that much is enough. Just kind of fry it up a bit, you know, get it kind of burry and edgy and then just put it in there. So it looks like paper. Yeah. Could you use paper? Yeah, the other thing is though it gets dry. wet. Yeah. It's dry, you know. Okay. Mm. And then the other thing that's useful, even if it gets wet, is a fire steel. And then, if you don't know how to use them, they'll always have an up button on it. So that is the bit that faces up. And the way to do it is you pull the, the, the steel back towards you. If you do it the other way and you push that there, chances are you're going to knock all that flying. Okay, so the simple way is to kind of pull that back towards you. What's it made of that? Uh, don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, good. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna iron and magnesium, isn't it? So, and the key is you're gonna try and drop the spark into the um, the birch bark. So then just hold these over. <coughs> Make sure the hands are in the fire. And... Let's see them move them. <laughs> uh, I think I'll move them. So, you know, you you know, them in, aren't they? so <laughs> then, as soon as the flames start coming through, then you know the time is right to put the next thickness of sticks on. Hazel, um, which is this stuff, is really good wood in a forest because it's kind of resinous as well and always catches. Ash, ash is one of the best. Sweating, yeah, so this is ash, this kind of um, knobbly, bobbly stuff. It's got often got those black buds on it. And the saying is that um, ash wet or ash dry queen can warm her fingers by 
it ash green or ash brown fit for a king with a golden crown so wet dry mm. green brown ash will always burn and you just have a bit of patience so don't keep loading it up otherwise the demand for heat will be too much you need to let it burn through a little bit and then you you know you as it as the word goes you build a fire so you gradually build it as soon as the flames start coming through it's ripe to put on the next lot okay so tomorrow you're going to have a chance to have a go yourselves but as i said earlier um, I don't want 40 fires springing up all around this wood <laughs> tonight, so just wait till I say, and because I want to make sure we've got water to put anything out. So even if you're an expert, you know, don't uh, do it tonight. Matt, would you do everything exactly the same if it was raining? Yep. No change, no difference. Yeah. Sorry? You could string a basher up yeah. if you've got a basher, yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, you, you might well have your basher high enough and just do it kind of on the edge and underneath yours, yeah. Because it shouldn't need to be that big, especially if you dug a little bit of a pit, you know. I drew sheets of earth off a dead tree. Yeah. Pine. Yeah. It rots. You get really quite big chunks. Just build like a lean-to. And again, now that it's to that level, you can put the slightly bigger ones on. And we're going to want to kind of spread this to the whole pit as soon as this grows a bit. So... Do you always do a, like a rectangular one rather than a round one? Sorry? Do you always do that shape rather than round? Well, I've done it this shape because it's much easier to cook on, this one. Because ah, okay. it's hard to reach into the middle of a big okay, circle enough. that you all sit yeah. round, whereas here, you know, you've got the length to cook across. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good size. Yeah.